Welcome to the Commando Cast. I'm Mike. And I'm Andrew. And today we're going to be talking battlefields, casual play, and where we go from here. So this last week at Gongai, we did not do our tournament. We played casual, so we'd like to talk a bit about what we learned from that. Uh, but you guys did have a tournament, so how'd that go? We did. We had a tournament this week. Uh, it was good. We had 11 players. Uh, we were one short uh, of having a full 12 because someone decided to watch the national championship game instead of playing. I wanted to be a real boy. <laughs> right. For one day, right? <laughs> Two, a couple days a year. <laughs> so it was great. We, uh, we, had, uh, we had some players that don't always come who, like, for a while they haven't come, mm -hmm. they came, and then we had our, our two of our three new players, so it was a, it was all around, uh, it was super fun. Uh, all the decks were, everyone brought new-ish decks. Like, mm -hmm. there was there was very few... You mean new meta decks, or, like, next we, decks we haven't seen before? Like, new meta decks, okay. like, and some decks I haven't seen before, mm -hmm. too, as well. But, like, Nova brought, like, Vader. Um, there was very few three-wide support. I was probably, I think I might have been the only one running a, a three-wide support. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, so it was it was cool. Okay. So what, what decks did you see? Just a quick, quick um, rundown. So I brought Afra Super Battle Droids, which was disgustingly effective. Oh, Afra Grievous Battle Droids? No, just single die Afra, single die Super Battle Droid. Super, oh, single Super, super, super Battle Droid. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, it, it's very consistent. And it has a lot of hit points, so it was it was good. Um, I've been thinking about that deck for a while, so that was good. Um, we saw kind of a, a newish version of uh, Snoke and Tarkin, you know. Um, and then the one I remember the most because it, it kicked me straight in the face mm -hmm. was uh, Kess Dameron and Rex, uh, the clone Rex. Oh, I don't yeah, Rex. Yeah. So Rex, <laughs> Rex, yeah, Rexy. You know, sexy Rexy. Um, and it was, <laughs> uh, it was. Awful, and that actually the reason why it was awful. Is I know why you think he's sexy because you kind of look like that. Rex. Is correct, yes, for <laughs> the same haircut. Um, so uh, one of the reasons why it's disgusting is one of our topics today. So maybe we can kind of go back to that. But it's yeah, an yeah, and, deck. yeah. So we'll, we'll come back to that. So yeah. um, like I said, we were just played casual uh, this weekend at Gongai, which is why you'll notice a lack of videos this week. So we just didn't want to put any pressure on anybody. Let everybody bring whatever they want, play however they want, and I mean, I'll play however they want, right? But right play whatever they want and kind of be cool about sure. it, right? So um, one of the big learnings I had from this weekend, so Daniel came in, he was playing a deck, and I don't want to give away his spice because I haven't approved that with him, right? Mm -hmm. But he was playing a deck and he was using Collar, right? So military camp on Collar, right? The battlefield. Yes. So I, obviously I real I understand how this card works, but I didn't realize quite the effect, right? So let me read <laughs> off exactly how it works. So. Activate up to power action, activate up to two of your characters that share a subtype. Correct. If one of those characters is a trooper, you may reroll one of its character dice. So he was playing two characters that shared a subtype that were not trooper. Correct. And then one of those characters was a trooper. So he would activate them both, roll them in, and then he could still reroll the trooper die because of how it's worded, right? It says if one of those characters is a trooper, you can reroll the trooper die, right? So both his leaders come in, rerolls the trooper die. I mean, I guess that's it, but yeah. still, like, that's pretty good and i didn't even think about it right because you read it and you're like oh okay you play this with troopers it's like just how it goes in your head right, but right yeah. but no and, and everyone and their sister that. has a subtype now and right there's a lot um uh, and they made some pretty disgusting character pairings now well and, and so why i find this interesting is mike had mentioned to me offline before we started that everybody on monday was running caller yeah yeah military military camp, right yeah so I mean, what were was it troopers? I mean, it couldn't have been. They were just using it for the double action. Yeah, a lot of a lot of it because there were there are a lot of leaders and there are a lot of troopers. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple. Uh, trying to remember if there was a droid deck that wasn't mine. I wasn't running it because I'm never going to clean the battlefield anyway. But um, it was mostly leaders. It was leaders and troopers. Like is is what I saw. That that seemed to be the hot spice. But um, it was action sheet with a card, power action of the battlefield, roll in six to eight dice with all the and there's a lot of supports that also activate along with mm -hmm. characters now yeah like conscript that. squad right yeah um so roll all that in and then you're left with a with a, a, a ambush action um oh so you're talking like a tactical mastery or right. the uh, seize the, the day the, seize the day right. the new one yeah. yeah um there there was um in i played i played daniel 
um, with that deck, and he actually had a couple ways to do it, but I don't remember one. I remember he, he had uh, Tech Mac, right? But right. Um, I couldn't remember the other one that he... But I know he had at least... Four, I thought he had at least Well, so he, he, was, he was playing Seize the Day as well. Oh, that's um, a neutral but, card. It, it, it is a neutral card, the Seize the Day? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. I believe... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm... It's got pretty positive. It's got Padme. I mean, you've got you've got the list up. But you oh, yeah. From yeah. that. Um, but, you know, fu- fundamentally, him and I talked after Casual, and I, I don't know how many changes or not he made, but we had uh, recommended a couple changes. But uh, we are confirming Seize the Day is, is, is neutral, neutral right? And obviously, yeah. I'll put it up because I always put up the cards that we talk about. But, yeah, so I was really impressed with... So he, he did go Monday. I didn't know that. So, yeah. So he, yeah, that's... I mean, that cat that's out of the bag now locally, but I thought that was a pretty slick little deck, right? Um, but fundamentally, just with that roll-in, it's like, you know what? You just rolled in two liters, and we rolled a trooper die. Right. That's amazing, Right. So uh, that battlefield, yeah, the way that worked is pretty good, right? I, I just wonder if that is was I guess I I, I played someone who destroyed me with that battlefield um, using red heroes, and I remember at one point like looking at the battlefield and going, "Is, is that really how that works? Like I I don't understand right. like wh- why you're rolling in two characters and, and three supports and then it's your turn again." Wait, like, what three supports? Um, or are you just being sarcastic? No, it was two conscript squads, and I think it was the two... Con- yeah, I think it was... I was yeah, probably yeah, dramatic. Okay. But it, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, at least two supports. But um, it was it was brutal. Like, yeah, so so let, let's go ahead and head into that, right? Yeah. So, Matt, or, uh, you also made the comment to me before we started shooting... "Quote unquote, Kess is broken. Kess is broken. <laughs> so yeah. let's let's talk about that for a bit, right? Because we're already talking about the Red Hero, which is what you were just talking about. Yes, yes. Red Hero is back, kids. Put on your Red Hero boots because it's it's about to get Red Hero in so, here. I find it interesting because um, while you're while you're pulling them up, right? But I am not that impressed with Kess, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I get the like whole two focus all in thing. I get that. That's great. But his point cost, I think, is horrible. Like he should have been a fourteen point character." And change his stats. Like, there's no reason he shouldn't fit with two eight point troopers. Like, it's just completely unacceptable from a design standpoint to me that he's 16 points. It just doesn't make any sense. The only pairing he has from a flavor standpoint is Rex. There's only one character. Do, They're not even in the same set. They're not even in the same. Do, do you think he? I mean, do you, do you think he should have been? You would lower his. Yeah, I would make values him, so right and make him 14. He's two gun, three gun for one, right. one focus, two focus, and a money. Right. I would make him 14 points. I don't know whether 10 or 11 health would be correct right that's not where i'm going i'm not i'm not even talking balance here but make him a one two one focus one focus or something right like you don't have to make him a blowout right but as he stands right now at 16 points his only viable partner is rex there's no one else and they're not in the same set they're not even in the same block and i think that's kind of dumb well there's there's other i'm trying to think here there's other there's other characters, but none that share his. There's no other. There's, there are no other troopers. Is okay. What I'm saying, All right. right? Okay. No. No. Obviously, there are a ton of fourteen right, point right, characters. Right. right. You're you're stating to really use his power action. Right. Or his. It's not even a power. And action. like and looking at him, like I always wondered why Cassian wasn't a trooper, but thank goodness Cassian isn't a trooper with him. Right. Could you imagine him and Cassian with Cassian being a trooper? Is it possible that they designed it this way so that you could play him one die with two die, two troopers? I mean... Maybe, but then, then it's 13 and it doesn't add up to 30, so you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, because all those one-point plots... Yeah, have. like, I mean, yeah, you can run <laughs> espionage, right? Right. So, good. so I, I, guess, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that probably what happened was, like, he was originally lower and through play... Or higher, and through play testing, he got either moved either direction, right? And then they kind of just missed, like, where he fits. <laughs> But don't get me wrong. I, I think I think his like I'm not a crazy person. His action is really good. I just he bothers me as a character that there's right. not like a two char- There's not like a two trooper pairing. Like why is he not in the woods with like two indoor troopers? Uh, you know what I mean. Remind me, allies of necessity. Is that a negative two? It's negative two. So you could run that with two troopers. You could. Sure. Meta solved. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Two troopers with two blanks apiece, right? Yes. Well, they get three roll. Come on now. Yeah. No, I mean that, and that's fine. So, um, so some of our brothers in moving on to our next topic, okay. right? Some of our brothers in podcasting, writing, whatever, have kind of been deeming this. And to be clear, they're correct, right? Like this is the meta with nothing. It's like the dead meta, right? It's a meta with nothing to play for, mm-hmm. except I kind of like it because 
I'm wondering if it's not going to help keep things less competitive, right? I mean, there's still going to be the people who are showing up with the three wide, pull entourage, pull entourage, pull hired muscle, right? Like that's going to happen. But um, I don't know. Like it feels a little more relaxed to me, at least right now. Now, granted, it's still young in the meta, but what do you think? I totally agree. I mean, I don't agree with you that it's a dead meta. I, I think that's a... I, well, it is from a highly competitive... Like, if, if your success criteria is, I'm only here to win worlds, then, like... Right. There's yeah, not, then there's nothing... This is a dead set. Because thing, even right? all of your grinding is for nothing right now. Because right. By, the, by the time there's anything to actually play for, we'll have another set out. Right. Likely. I mean, let's... I, who the heck knows when store championship season's going to be or if that's even a thing anymore, right? right. But, like... If store championship hits even at the same time as next year, we're in theory would be getting the next set like early to mid July. Right. So you're basically right on top of store championship season. So maybe there's a couple store championships that fire so in this meta. We but. we kind of like our group when we know there's store championship season coming up, we normally get serious about a month ahead of time, mm-hmm. right? So if store champ season again is in June as it was last year, right? It probably should have started in May, but they started in June. Um, well, the first ones up here were early July. Like, all the ones up here waited for the new set to release, right? Because it was July 4th weekend when yeah. we the force well, release. Let's assume that's not going to happen. Let's say they ha- they start in June, okay. right, at the end of the meta. That means we're going to probably start honing in our, our decks with here good in, in mid-May, right? Which is a couple months after the set, so that's okay. Right. And, and right now, we're we're almost to mid-April, so really we have a month of, of exploration mm-hmm. before we start honing in. I think that's a pretty good cadence, Um like for me personally, and also there's a lot of players in our group and our community that that leave the game when things get super serious, right. and they have been back um, for for this portion because we're just there to to mm-hmm. just to, just to try new stuff, and we're you know we're drinking beer and laughing with each other, and it's it's not serious, and I really enjoy it, and I, I love to win, like I love being competitive, but. I, to me, this is. I think it's good that there's a. I don't want this. I don't want to see an entire set go by without anything. Yeah. To well, I. I, I. I guess what I'm saying is I think that's going to happen. Now I don't personally care. Right. Right. Like don't don't get me wrong. Right. Like I'm. I think it's great, especially after because I I feel that we, at least in our area, right, with the way that our regionals fell, like I feel that we lost the entire last set. Of just being competitive. Oh time. yeah, it was a it was brutal. And so I don't mind having like a nice break where we can like all become friends again, right? They were but nasty cards at a nasty time. Like that's I, that's the, the, the across the galaxy meta was not a. <laughs> right? So, um, but I mean, other people probably liked it, so that that's right. fine. But from from us, for from my standpoint, and I know a lot of people around here agree, like things got way too competitive yeah. in that set. So it's nice for us to have a break. Uh, but but I do think it's a reasonable statement that this is. Whether you want to call it the dead meta, the non-competitive meta, whatever you want to call it, right? Like, by and large, if you were to take two to three months off of Destiny right now, you probably wouldn't miss anything from like a competitive calendar standpoint. Yeah, I, I, at least until June. Yeah, right. I would say yeah. So if you're looking to take a couple a couple of months off, now now is probably the time. But how about um, you just mentally take time off from a competitive standpoint and like roll some dice? Yeah, have some fun. Roll right. some two character pairings and see what can happen. Yeah, right? I've got one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, I agree with you um, that there could be a lull here, but I, I think it's a good thing. I actually, I, I believe this is this is a good thing. I, I don't like if if you're super competitive at Star Wars Destiny, chances are you're super competitive at something else as well, because uh, Star Wars Destiny is is not a full time competitive game for most people that, that take it seriously. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so go go crush some souls in your other game, and then come back when it's time to crush souls in this. I, that that would be my yeah. advice. Or you know, when it's springtime, go for a run, like or not. Sorry, gaming podcast. <laughs> right. My bad. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So fair enough. Okay. All right. So hey, so we had a viewer question after our last episode. We were okay. talking about Phasma and Pelt. So VH asks, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I've been running single Phasma in Iwato. It really helps getting the Mega Blaster troopers in. In my opinion, with this list, you don't need Elite Phasma because you are capable of rolling in a lot more dice. Thoughts? Love it! Yeah, I, I, I've actually been skewing towards the uh, single Phasma being actually more playable, right. especially after I read, and all the credit goes to our Danish overlords. Right, but that Phasma Piet list that they had, oh, super sexy. <laughs> oh, I like that list a lot. Yeah. Right? 
And I, I so I do want to say because I had and you you ran up on the good side of this because you destroyed me right. But I had uh, when Piet first came out, I had a three stormtrooper single die Piet. Mm. It's thirty points, and the idea was to use the ties mm. to just roll in trooper, roll in trooper, drop a tie because you're probably going to dry it, uh, get one, and then you can flip to four resources, play two more ties, right? That, so that, that was the game plan, and it was just too slow right. in that meta because. Everything was too slow in that meta, right? But um, so that's why I'm really attracted to that. Like that deck is, and, and again, go read their article on it. I'm not going to like give their deck list and right, stuff, right? right. But uh, I'm not going to take their fun away from them, right? But that deck list is super sexy, and it's for the same idea. It's like I only am using Phasma for the two troopers, and then using Piet to autofocus for two money, and then dropping a Mega Blasters, and then autofocusing to four money. I mean, that's pretty spicy right yeah, yeah so vh uh i you're to answer your question and give your thoughts i think it's a great idea and uh, um the reason i think it's such a good idea is it really splits the danger focus of your deck into two so um phasma is very dangerous by herself even with one die but it's and it's not her die that's so good it's yeah. her ability her die stink right um so well, they don't stink but right yeah. so, certainly for a 21 point elite for character, a 21 right, point her they stink. dice suck right so <laughs> it's her ability that is that is very good um, it, so that is dangerous even with one die. Watto, although not normally as very dangerous because his dice are, uh, you cannot interact with them, it, he is dangerous mm -hmm. because you can ramp so quickly. So you've done a good job of coming up with an idea that, that really uh, splits this focus between, uh, you've, you've almost created a mid mid deck with, um, or a character pairing with, with the ability to ramp into a new, a support that acts as almost another character right. die. Like the Mega, Mega, Mega Blasters is like a character die with two guns on it, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the potential drawback, right, is that Phasma's still gonna be the first target even at one die, mm -hmm. because she's your leader, right? So you're gonna have to run the Imperial Officer, you're gonna have to, so you can get another leader on the board, right. so you don't lose your other two rolling dice with Mega Blasters, right? right? Um, and then, you know, Watto himself can't do any damage, so I think you're going to have to overrun supports. Like, you might actually have to play Planetary Bombardment in this deck okay. and Ties, right? Like, the money. I think you might have to combine. I don't know that you do, like, the whole Entourage thing. I think you probably try to combine the um, kind of the Piet model where you have the Ties. I I, I don't know I, my, how much my money first, my, my first initial My initial run through just mentally was I was going to run Mega Blasters. I was going to run Imperial Officer. Mm -hmm. uh Conscripts just because they're they're cheap and easy, mm -hmm. um, and then also I liked uh, higher the, the hired muscle mm -hmm. upcoming. Uh, that dice is very expensive to 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 pay for, but because you have so much um, because you have so much money, it's easy to pay for it. My only issue was that you lack a lot of focus. Phasma's dice have the fo the do do focus sight on them, so I thought maybe I, I would probably recommend putting in a Senate chamber to help because you can easily remove a blank. Yeah, die that's to, that's fair. To, I mean, the Imperial Officer has focus, and he lets you focus a trooper, yeah. so that can flip your three three side on the Megas. But um, and remember, Conscript Squad comes in with the Imperial Officer as well, right? So um, oh, because it's leader, so oh. it's not a leader it doesn't have to be a leader yeah, okay. character. Yeah, okay. So I, I, yeah, I think that Imperial Officer actually might be the most Im well, not the most important include because right. it's not your damage dealer. But I think that's an extremely important include in that deck, like no question. I think right. Um, yeah, I think the other. I don't know. We, we, you, I, th I think the key is, I mean, go play test it, man, and yeah. let us know because I think the key is going to be how fast, like, it's going to ramp, no question about it. I think the question is, can it ramp fast enough to not get blown away? I, I think you could easily play Mega Blaster Troopers round one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just easily, you could do that. And then I think with sure. that, it, with Mega Blasters and Phasma on the table, you're talking, she gets her die plus two. Mega Blaster gets it dice plus two. So you're talking six damage dealing dice round one mm -hmm. without having to take any money off your red dice, only taking off Watto. Um, I, I think that's extremely powerful. The only problem is you might end up getting stuck with a bunch of dice you can't resolve. Uh, right? I mean, it's... It, you, cause yeah, yeah. There, and there are a lot of blanks on them. You're not playing advanced training. Right. You're not playing advanced yeah. training. So, yeah, I mean... I think you have to play double die Watto. Yeah, it, it's that those, right? that plus two side is a real problem mm -hmm. on on Watto. So you need to, you need the the dual dice for him. But yeah, anyway, excellent deck idea. Yeah, um, we're I actually would like to put it together and see what I can do and mm -hmm. and run it through a local. So thank you for the deck idea, and I think you're onto something. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you have any other um, 
decks you wanted to talk about or anything like that? Um, so we talked about Kess and Rex. So that was that was right. the main that one. Was, that was your big one. You wanted that to was about. yeah. That was my like. Oh my god, Steven just murdered me. Um, <laughs> actually, I would like to remind everybody that um, the Vader's fist is a trooper. Mm-hmm. Which is very interesting. I was playing against Eric this week, and he rolled he rolled out the fist, and it rolled the three disrupt. I had no money, so I was like, ha, ha. and then he rolled in his uh, officer. his officer, and then flipped it to three guns, and I went, uh, uh, what? It's a it's a trooper. So yeah. another reason why you that can also card... measure for measure it <laughs> in desperate times. <laughs> right? Yes, you could measure for measure it, but uh, another reason why this card needs to die. It's fist fist. Yeah, it's just it's too good, man. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, speaking of cards dying, Theed, right? So you could actually run Theed in that Phasma version. In the in the fa- the Phasma Watto version, you could run Theed, right? Because oh. you're gonna you can don't mind sacking that right. blank. Yeah, and that's actually a blank. And, and if you roll Watto in and you get a blank and a, the two for one, you actually you actually could remove the blank for a resource and then you get an ambush. At that, at that moment? No, because there's no neutral. He's a, oh, that's right. It's not a scoundrel. Yeah, yeah. It's not there's a scoundrel. no neutral. Yeah. We, right. You could run it because you you have so many dice that are kind of yeah. wasted, right? Yeah. I, I do think in that deck, I, I think you're right. I think in that deck, and we've circled back, sorry. Yes. But I think in that deck, I think you're going to end up losing a lot of cards to reroll. Yeah, so that's, what, that's where I'm saying. Because there's no, no, man, if Watto had a focus, obviously if he had a focus, he'd be broken. So that's fine, but... So, yeah. are there any other battlefields you want to discuss? I know that was kind of a, um, one of the things. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, the cat's out of the bag on Salt Flats. Like, Salt Flats yeah. is amazing because everybody and their mom's a leader, right? It's actually pretty hard to put a list together these days without a leader. So, um, let's talk about Mean Streets. For yeah, a the the risky battlefield Mean Streets. And let's talk about why it's so risky. Yeah, so Mean Streets um, is... The claimability on Mean Streets is you may spot a scoundrel uh, to place one resource on this battlefield, period. So that's a statement. Um, you may play an event from your hand, decreasing its cost by the number of resources on this battlefield. Um, so, in essence, you're spotting a scoundrel to put a resource that stays there for the rest of the game. And that's where I failed. I didn't realize it stays there the whole game. I thought, I, I mean, it doesn't, that's not what it says. I'm just telling you what I thought right, when right, I read yeah. it the first time. When I read it the first time, and what's been in my head since like 10 minutes ago, is that you would remove the resource and basically the number of resources you removed would pay for it. Right. Because that's just in what was in my head. And right. that is certainly not what it reads. Nope, nope. Um, so there was, um, there is a yellow, there is a yellow event that removes two dice and then you have to pass the next... Flee the scene. Flee the scene. Yeah. So that was somebody I saw mention that that would be a very interesting play at yeah. the end of the round. I think that's the, the no-brainer one, right? Yeah. Um, and that, that was one of our uh, viewers as well had oh, commented good. on that. Okay, right? good. So you can, you can play flee the scene because you have to pass your two actions, but you're passing right. anyway. Well, right? and so. if you have one or two resources on this thing and entangle at the end of the round when you're, right. do, when you're, you're going fast because you're going to want to claim this battlefield... Your opponent has more dice in the field. You can claim out, you know, and and, and hit that, you know, and, and just clear two of their dice for free. I mean, it's pretty big. Um, so I think it's an interesting ba- battlefield. I actually, I, I I consider you one of the best deck builders that I, I know. So I actually would, I'd like to challenge you to try to make something with this deck, with this battlefield in mind that that, uh, that you think would would work. I mean. I, again, I'm not trying to say it's great or anything, but I think there might be something there that, that could be particularly uh, loathsome. Yeah, I think I think my fear with this battlefield, right, is that be- because now that I realize that the resources stay, A, it's annoying to be passing battlefield across the field with tokens. Out, but <laughs> now that I realize sure. <laughs> now that I realize it stays there, you have to be a very fast deck. Right. And I don't know that like scoundrels have instigate. And I think instigates a hero card actually. So that's basically the new hit and run. For okay, one. right. Oh, the, that's the yellow right. hit and run yes, for yes. one, I believe, is a hero card. Okay. Right? How I don't know where scoundrel because your scoundrels are going to be like trying to play entourage and stuff. Like you're not going to be fast. So like unless you're playing Han Chewie, which I've tried really hard to put even a binder list together with that, and like it just doesn't work. Like there's just not enough stuff. Yeah, I I can't. You have to really reach. Yeah, to find stuff. Yeah. I, I, I maybe maybe there's a maybe Han Kira is is just. I mean that it's not like that deck. Well, all Han, of a sudden, actually, Han I mean, Kira is pretty fast, and you're gonna get ton like all of the yellow. You know, you're gonna get all the yellow uh, events, which again makes her. I'll give I, you that. Yeah, I played someone w- that was playing her the other day, and 
gosh darn it, I forget every single time that she can easy pick me when she even when she's playing a villain. It hits me every time. I can't believe it. It was it was kind of gross. That's but. that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe one of our viewers can. Yeah. It was actually a good list. It was Ikira Iwato Double Down, um, and they were playing for scoundrels, right? I mean, they, they were sure they were playing. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess there's no real reason to do the Han pairing anymore. Well, I mean, except for no allegiance, but which is not bad. But well, Han's really. I mean, he's got solid. No, that's fine. Just you know, that, those two losing feed. That actually really hurt those guys, right? Uh, yeah, and I think I think our expectations may have me. I think our level of what we think is amazing was really hurt by that last set. Like there were so many cards that were above the power curve. Um, right. That it's. Now that we're kind of coming back down to earth a little bit with the new, it, we, some of these sometimes we see this stuff and we're like, we almost have to play suboptimal suboptim- cards to be to make it interesting. Um, yeah. Like when I when I played the when I played my Palpato deck, I specifically chose not to play Fist because I wanted to try something else. But every time I played the stupid um, Entourage, it was like, I wish that had been a Fist. Right. Right. I mean, <laughs> I was like, no, I, I hear you. And I, I, I am actually a little concerned because I, I do agree with you. I think there's a significant power creep and it's not or down creep in this set. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just because now it's the base set and maybe we'll creep back up by set nine. Right. Um, that's completely possible. But the like even the characters by and large don't seem as good as like I think the average character in this set doesn't seem as good as the average character in the previous block. And, and there's certainly no Vader and there's no Snoke like where you're just like if yeah, you're not I mean, playing these you're dead. Let's consider Vader a one-off. Right. But Snoke, I mean, right. It, it was it was Snoke and and two other characters that didn't matter pick your point. Like if you weren't playing those then right. I mean, you were doing it wrong. Right. Um, and I, you know, I don't know that Snoke would have been all that bad if he wasn't able to be paired with three wides so yeah. that you could go rainbow with him, right? I think that's the real problem with Snoke, but we digress. Right. <laughs> Sorry to step back into the old meta, but yeah. some of us are still have our we still have our scars. Well, I, I guess time. where I'm going with that, I mean, I was going somewhere with that, right? right? Where I'm going with that is, I don't know that we're like everybody right now is playing their new toys, right? We're right. seeing a lot of the new stuff, but like I don't know that for the long term that we're going to be there. Like again, I I've, I've already been very vocal that I think Tarkin Snoke's still a thing, and right. you saw Tarkin yeah. Snoke. Oh, Tarkin Snoke won right. on Monday, it, yeah. right? It beat me str- extended strength of schedule, and I had beat him. So, yeah, I guess Eric won, sure. <laughs> but, I mean, but e- but either way, right? Like, that's no change. Right? We were just talking to Han Kira, which is no change. Right. We were, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot. I mean, Shadowcaster doesn't really change. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad we haven't seen a lot of that in Locals yet. And I but still it's just because think- stuff's new. Right. And, and I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, I still think Han Biggs, Falcon's a thing. And, like, that deck might have actually gotten yeah, better. better. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's some new stuff. In now, you could play... Game. There you go. You play Mean Streets in Han Biggs, Falcon, because it kind of hurts for money anyway. Right. And you're always for... Like, it's amazing that that, that deck is as fast as it is. So, yeah, that might be a really good... Yeah, game. that's probably where you play that. Actually. Because it, let's say they kill Han first, right? Let's say they go after Han. And, oh, well... And, oh, and, but then there's still resources. Right, there's still resources on it. Yeah, yeah, so you still it. get to claim out and then right. do, you know. I don't know how many big, at that point, non spot yellows there are to, to go around, but I mean. Well, but it doesn't have to be big. You only need one. Sure, that's that's right? true. I mean, but the, the real joy is playing the two cops. Like, Han Big Falcon's not playing, like, into the crosshairs, right? Like, you're, you're maybe playing, like, Electroshock or. Flee the Scene or, would be or, a good example. Or right? I have three damage dice in the pool I claim and play Pulverizer for free. <laughs> That's a villain card. <laughs> no, but so yeah, yeah, I'm no, just saying, I, like, I, if I, I'm playing this, yeah, like, I I, I'm playing saying. it too. I think it's got some potential. I think it's very Trixies, but it could also turn No, I'm, 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 I'm in agreement. I'm in total agreement. It's just, uh, I don't know that, and I guess that's what I'm saying is, like, I don't know that you even need, like, the two resources on it to make it. I can't believe the resources stay on the whole time. Right. That is mind blowing. Yeah, two is probably plenty, although maybe, maybe getting a free crosshairs at the end of the round, you know, might not be too bad. Man. They re- if they reprint reversal, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one destruction right would be another interesting one. Oh, like you're at the end, they have it's all at the, the end. You already resolved out. Yeah, you're, you're done. They're still kind of fixing oh, their dice. Uh, aggressive negotiations. Oh, crazy! Heck yeah, man! That card is also pretty good. 
card is beyond pretty yeah, good. That's, that's pretty good. That's a, that's a good. So, so you can either lose your turn or take eight so damage. I would like to rescind my <laughs> challenge to Andrew to make Mean Streets good because it sounds like if we put ten seconds of thought into it, it might actually be usable. Yeah. Um, so. All right, fair enough. So I feel like you and I, we already did our viewer question. I feel like you and I are turning off. So if you as a viewer have questions, we do answer them. Correct. Uh, well, sometimes. <laughs> Normally. <laughs> Normally we do. No, we, we try. So uh, Mike does a really good job of going through and answering comments that you leave uh, just on the YouTubes right. itself. Um, and then when we see ones that we actually want to talk about, we'll bring right. them on here. So keep them coming. We enjoy it. Um, uh, yeah, so please, if you like what we're doing, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the uh, notification button so that you know when we, we post new videos. Uh, we really enjoy doing this. Like it is, it is really one of the highlights of our week, and we like when you interact with us. So please keep doing that as well. Um, we're on our, our mad dash to one thousand subscribers. Like who knows, sometime late twenty twenty two. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, at this rate, we'll we should there. be. <laughs> so we, we we really do appreciate everyone watching. So thank you. Yeah, no, so that's great. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for coming. Um, I do have a quick announcement to hijack from Mike here. So Mike's done an excellent job of being my buddy. So I'd like to present Mike with his Commando Cast play mat to match my nice shiny one. <laughs> yeah, well, so I thank you, Mike, for everything you've done for the channel and for us and for always being on here and being my buddy. I so, appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Uh, go Commando. Go Commando.